Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel. I've come down to Surrey to see John Morgan and talk about his experience with a heat pump. Now, there are people watching this video who be going, oh, not him again, he's anti-heat pump. He's got a hidden agenda, he's being paid by big oil and all this kind of thing. I've got to say that I absolutely am not. I've fitted heat pumps. I've actually had quite a lot of success fitting heat pumps in swimming pools, I think they work really well there. Fitting them in the right house, absolutely fine, but so many people are being missold heat pumps these days. I don't even know what John's story is at the moment, but he's gonna tell it. And if you have good experiences with a heat pump and you'd like us to come and film you, we're delighted to do that. But every time somebody contacts us to say, I love heat pumps, you're talking a load of rubbish. I say, tell me what heat pump you got, give us some details, we'll come and talk to you, you never hear from them again. So that tells you something. But anyway, John is a genuine guy. He's got a heat pump and he's got a story. So hello, John. Hello, Roger. Good so, to see you. Yeah. And you. Thanks very much. Now, just you tell it in your own words and I'll um, I'll interrupt. Okay, so we bought the heat pump about five and a half years ago. So we've had given it a good run. Bought it almost on a whim. I thought I was a bit of an eco warrior. So, you know, mm. want to help uh, do my bit for the, uh, the the climate crisis and all that sort of thing. I had a bit of money in my pocket at the time, so it seemed like a good idea. The broad principle of it sounds fantastic, but the devil's in the detail, really. First thing we did, got the thing installed, and then the company that uh, installed it went bust. Can I just ask, was this pre-grant, or did you get some kind of renewable heat incentive thing from the government? Renewable heat incentive. So okay. yeah. that, that, that was quite interesting, because when I first sent my reading suit to Ofgem, they said, basically, you've solved the carbon crisis because you're producing more energy than the nuclear power station. <laughs> so you've got solar panels up here, haven't you? have got some solar panels yeah. up here as well. So obviously something was wrong, and it turned out that the um, sensors had been wrongly installed. So instead of the sensors being in a copper uh, holder, if you like, or brass fitting within the pipework. Pocket, yeah. yeah. A pocket, you might call it, I'm yeah. not technical. So they just taped them onto the pipe with a bit of tape. So I did find a local company uh, that's into renewables and they were the sort of cavalry came out. Uh, they realized what the problem was. Then we managed to sort it out and get it working. And at that point, I was able to get back to Ofgem, who I have to say have been absolutely brilliant throughout the whole five and a half years. And they were particularly helpful when we had this problem. Very patient and they did help me once we got the thing going, uh, in terms of the heat I'd been generating but not being paid for. So I, th I think of all the people in this whole saga, ironically, government department, up in wow. Scotland, I think they are, yeah, yeah. have been really very, very helpful. Anyway, that so we got, we got the thing going. Then the next thing started happening. It started tripping out. Every time it went on, all the lights went out in the house. So it turned out then that the, uh, they, the, the, the installer sent them a job properly and checked that the, the house electrics could take the heat pump coming on. Right, so this was a start-up surge of it, was actually tripping the circuit breaker. Yeah, everything would go out, okay, a whole yeah. lot. That and, meant, and you're on two phase, you're not on three phase here, are you? Just ordinary uh, power supply. Just ordinary power supply. Yeah, that's okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I had to get power networks out and the electricity company to sort of shake hands and do all the stuff. So that was another stress. So anyway, we got it up and running, so it wasn't cutting out, so that was good. Then one February night, half past 10 at night, you could hear this click, 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 clicking. Went outside and the heat pump's covered in ice. Yeah, okay. So it was quite clear that if I didn't get rid of the ice, the fans were gonna stop because of the buildup of ice in them. Mm. So I then had to get um, a watering can with hot water in. The click, click, clicking, was that the fan blades hitting the ice? Hitting the ice, mm. yeah. That, oh, okay. We're talking about blocks of ice. Yeah, here. yeah, no, it, so, should be it, should be, it should have gone into defrost at that point, yeah? Yes, and, and everything in the instruction says mm. that, that what it, that's what it was meant to do. I eventually got to the point where I, I rigged up a garden hose to my hot tap downstairs so I could go out to de-ice it which clearly wasn't, uh, wasn't what it should be. So called the cavalry in again, the renewables people, and they said, oh, you should have a buffer tank on it because that will help with the cycle. I don't, again, I'm not a technical guy. I don't know the details, but that largely resolved the problem. In the meantime, the, I was just not getting the COP ratios out of it. I was getting like one and a half, 1.9. So this is a COP. So basically for those people who don't understand, this is what you put in and what you get out. So if you put one kilowatt of electricity in and you get two kilowatts worth of heat out, so we call that a two to one 
COP. So you, you're you saying you were getting what? Well, I, I was told it was going to be three to four, and yeah. that made a lot of sense, and mm. that's the, one of the reasons I bought it. I was getting, like, just over one, 1. 1.9, two. The best I ever got it to was just over three, and that was during a hot period. Uh, <laughs> the weather was warm. Yeah, so yeah. what I learned was that heat pumps work, or my heat pump worked really well, when the weather was good outside. When you didn't need when it. When we didn't need it. <laughs> so yeah. It's crazy. Then the what we were finding was the variation in heat in the house. Now, we've got a, a home here, which is part 1931, nine-inch uh, brick. And the other half of the house is modern. So it insulated, underfloor heating, works tremendously well. Or it did with the gas boiler. But with the heat pump, what we were finding was the older part of the house was too cold. That, that was a problem. Uh, we had to keep the heat pump on the whole time. In the deep depths of the winter, when they say, you know, in Finland it's down to minus 30 and it, heat pumps work well, it was blooming cold. We had to have sort of supplementary heating, which is, is crazy. In the, in the winter months, the, the cop ratios tended to go down. And when it got warmer in the spring or, or in the autumn, they went up. One of the conclusions I came to with that and the icing problem was that in British weather, which is cold, but not as cold as, say, Finland, which seems to be the place everyone refers to <laughs> yeah, for, right. for yeah, some yeah. reason. It's not as cold as Finland, obviously, but it's much wetter. Mm -hmm. So if you go to, I know, people have been skiing or whatever, or up to the Arctic, they know it's very dry. I, I was thinking then, well, yeah, I can see that heat pumps, or certainly my heat pump, I can't say for everyone, it's a bit of a problem if, this, if the setup is not right, perhaps. There is a defrost cycle and the buffer tank did help make it work better. And only once have I had a bit of icing since and it was nowhere near oh, as bad. Really? But you still get a bit of it. And you got two blooming grey fans outside. So the other problem we got was that the fans were originally... You could hear them or walking up the street on a quiet day and it is pretty quiet around here but as they got older after five years it started being quite intrusive my poor neighbor next door in his eight early 80s said to me oh john look i've had to move bedroom because of the noise and we're talking uh what would he be about uh, 20 yards away so he's an 80 year old man when, and, you know, on my experience, yeah, he's, hearing starts to well, go. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. He could hear this. I think sometimes they, 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 the mistake they make is talking about decibels, and it's not about decibels, not about absolute noise. No. It's about an annoying frequency which gets into your head. You know, I can hear some frequencies perfectly and others hardly at all. Yeah. So that's what happens, isn't it? A bit like dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. But I, I was thinking, you know, in terms of government policy, if you're going to have a place like, I come from South Wales, you get lots of terraced houses. Can you mm. imagine everyone having yeah. a fan going yeah. off? You, yeah. You'd hear sure. the run the valley yeah. before you ever got there. You know, it'd be, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it'd be crazy. So, yeah. uh, but other problems then were things like the wiring had to be redone because it, it wasn't very well installed. The radios radiators all had to be replaced what with larger ones was that oh, much problem, larger what? They're, they're this sort of wide when you initially had it installed by the company that subsequently went bankrupt did they say have larger radiators we got the underfloor heating in the new part of the house so to be fair that that was that was okay but no they didn't suggest anything about the uh larger radiators i think i think also there's not a lot of places you could do research five years ago because it was, no, no, it, it was no, even no. a new technology but the um the actual system works by running constantly and i have to say when it is running constantly and it's not too cold outside and it's working it's very comfortable but it's a completely different experience to what we had before with the gas boiler sure. uh, which is where the radiators get hot Hmm. They don't get hot with, no, they with the heat pump. it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can work, providing you don't have huge fluctuations in, in the weather. And, of course, the other thing about the British weather that uh, is different to the Arctic, say, is that you get quite serious fluctuations in weather mm. temperatures. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And those weather temperatures can be within a 24-hour period. So we just come back from holiday. It was 10 degrees warmer. We're talking in Wales. I mean, I came out today and I was actually surprised when I walked out, stepped out into my garden, just how it's, mild it is. It is Yesterday, mild. Yesterday, pretty chilly. And we day before, even worse. Looking at maybe putting the heat on, but we resisted that's it. Right. It's not time. We're not going right. to put it on until that's Christmas right. Day. You know? yeah. And that's the problem, is that in, in the UK, we don't really have any weather. We're just, the wind blows one direction. We get a completely different temperature. It's coming from elsewhere all the time. You're, you're heating your house up 24, 48 hours in advance of your requirements say you've 
put that heat into the house, suddenly it goes mild. You think, I don't really need this heat today. Yeah. But you've got it. You can't then turn it off because it's in the fabric, it's in the underfloor heating, it's everywhere else. It's not possible as with a boiler to just say, let's flick it oh, off no, now. No, you can't do that. Or in the cold no. weather, yeah. turn it up slightly. Yeah. And this yeah. is what I keep saying to people. They don't really get this point. They say to me, well, surely that's the same. If you insulate, it'd be the same problem you'd have with a gas boiler. The more insulation you put in, the better. I say, yes, it is. But the gas boiler is a lot more responsive. In other words, oh, it is, yeah. turn it up, turn it down. Mild weather, turn it yeah. right down. Yeah. I mean, we, we came back at a fall day one time and it was uh, during the winter months and it took two and a half days almost three days to, yeah, to get yeah. up to a, a, a decent yeah. temperature and they're saying you shouldn't have turned it off that's what they will tell you you should no. have just left it gone away on holiday oh, no. left your house and, that, and on. that's right if you want to leave it away for two yeah. weeks while you're on holiday yeah uh, that's fine just but watch the, your bills you can watch them remotely now on your phone while you're sitting well, in the yeah, sun. spending money oh, on, yeah. on something that needs to be heated but the, the 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 other saving grace was that when the original system was installed they said we think you should keep your boiler for the water. Now that proved to be probably the best bit of advice I got because we've, we've got solar panels and we use the solar panels to heat the water and that for about six months of the year is fine. When it's a bit iffy either end of the summer we just turn the gas boiler on for an hour and we get enough water for our needs and that, that's great. So you've got quite a lot of solar panels on this roof yeah, and what you're saying is that in the autumn, the winter or whatever they won't do it on their own. They won't do it on their own, no, okay. you've got to have a top up, definitely. Yeah, I mean, or, or in the summer, if you like this year, we get about four or five days of really grey weather. It, you notice the, uh, the difference. Mm. But generally speaking... How many speaking, people in the house? But, uh, how? Well, there's only two of us now. The two? The so have, your hot water requirement's gone. not huge? Yeah? No. Has it been two of you since you had the heat pump put in? Yes. So I, I, I'd say the solar side of things have been, have been pretty good. And the, uh, I've got a Solix 200 that diverts the, uh, the power to the immersion heater, which seems to work very, very well. Come the winter months then, when the, the solar is not heating the water to the temperature you need, the gas, when it comes on for that hour, it, if it's on for the whole hour, the solar has heated the water largely and just tops it up. So that seems to work pretty well as a, as a system. Anyway, the, the buffer tank was installed about 18 months ago and within less than a year, the top valve, what, I don't know what it does, but it went, started to corrode and leak and all the rest of it. The fans had, uh, were making this racket. I had one or two uh, issues with the, the old part, the central heating, just a plastic tap end came off. So making turning the valves on and off to top up the, uh, uh, the vacuum uh, chamber was problematic so I've got to sort that out and I got a bill for uh, not a bill a quote for two grand's worth of work so it's about 600 quid for the fans to be bought and installed my wife said enough's enough she's calling this your hobby she's, <laughs> <laughs> she's calling it a lot of things <laughs> um, but uh, yeah it it was enough because the last time it was like two grand we had to do some work on it wiring and stuff and uh, it's just gone up from nine grand to about 16. I've seen on some videos now they say 16 grand is about right for a detached house yeah whether yeah. that's right or not oh. I don't know so then we were, we were talking about well that's 18 grand I can get a new gas boiler for two grand I said right okay we're gonna take it out that's it. So have you removed it yet? No, or? no, it's still sitting there at the moment. Right, I'm so you're still using it? No, I've turned it off since we got back from holiday and uh, have you made that decision? Okay. Because uh, the gas boiler's there. It's, uh, it's now 10, 12 years old, the gas boiler, but for the last five years we haven't used it for. Yeah, yeah. So it's Eating's been, hardly, yeah. hardly done any work. So is it still connected then? Yes, it, uh, it's, so they call it hybrid system. Yeah, yeah. I actually favour hybrid systems. The, the problem is the government that won't give a grant on a hybrid system, but there right. are plenty of hybrid systems out there which work perfectly because of the very reasons you described, which yeah. is that in the mild weather, you can use a heat pump. When it gets really cold, you can switch on the gas boiler, top it up. Well, as I was going to say, coming back from holiday, the trick I then learned was to, you get back, house is freezing, turn on the gas boiler to do the heating, get it heat done. the whole house up, turn it off, then turn the heat pump back on, then within a couple of days it catches up. So all these strategies have had to be developed as a result of the, largely as a result of the failings of the initial uh, installation. But... Um, as a result of how it's performed. I think, I think the lessons, the, the key lesson is, well, there's two key lessons. I think. One is they're called air source heat pumps. They should be called electric 
air source heat pumps so people realize they don't run by fresh air yeah. because i think there's a bit of a misunderstanding and they take a lot of electricity our bill went up two and a half times after we put it in the second thing is then the insulation you could get the house insulated particularly 1930s house solid brick on the outside and that would make the house look nicer that's a very expensive option so there's no cavity at all no in, cavity in at this all. bit but yeah. in the new bit there is okay that's, it's yeah. thermal like block in there so yeah. it's, uh, it's much it. more efficient and then i was thinking do you know what the way the the heating was performing beforehand and i know it's not as efficient was actually okay you know so we're thinking now well We'll do the obvious things like relook of the loft and make sure they, they top it up. Top it up. Because it keeps in going the, up and up and up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, in the old part of the house, yeah. possibly even the new part of the house, mm. where it is, you know, yay yeah. thick. Then the, the outside of the house, we can have a look at it in the future. I think technically I've seen enough of, you know, what you've done on videos and others to be cautious about uh, particularly internal insulation, but uh, external as well. So just want to uh, give it, take a deep breath before yeah. we spend any more yeah. money. Yeah, well, I mean, quite honestly, when you look at it, it's a fair old investment, isn't it? And It is, yeah. You know, yeah. you and I are probably of a similar age. I don't want to insult you, but yeah. you may be getting close to what, how old I am. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you've got to look at that in terms of return and think, well, what do we talk about, 20 years? from now you'll be getting and i understand all the arguments about yeah. we've got to do something about carbon and all the rest of it yeah. and i'm not making a case out either way yeah. on carbon because people jump to conclusions on it all i don't know enough about it you know i like clean air yeah, absolutely course, right absolutely. so if we can stop polluting the air with yeah. gas boilers yeah. fantastic you know yeah. who's going to argue with that so eventually some kind of system as i say hybrid system may be the way forward but to say that the government's saying take out your gas boiler and you didn't have this problem because you you got in before the what they call a boiler upgrade yes, scheme where right. you have to take out yes, your oil yes. or gas boiler yes, in order that, to that get the grant been, that would have been a disaster so you would have had to go and buy another gas boiler basically yeah, you probably have to have a two, two heat pumps as well yeah, to yeah. produce enough energy to heat mm. well this is a big house six bedroom house so mm. that never would have worked and I, the technology will get better i'm sure but i think fundamentally the if I was the government and all governments, whatever shade going forward in the UK, I've got a lot of money to spend. They need to spend it wisely. And I think if they said, right, houses after a certain point in time where they know that the building standards were sufficient to accommodate a heat pump and only look at those, that would be better than for everyone else insulation, loft insulation, all the rest of it. It's boring as hell, but I do take an interest in it. I'm still as passionate about the whole, whole sustainability and carbon thing and climate change as anyone else. Just having a blanket thing about heat pumps is, is, is just is not right. And I think people need to just think it through and come up with other solutions. Funnily enough, I talk to loads and loads of people because they all appear, you know, once you make a video like we've made a video and it's controversial, people start contacting you. Now, I've had you know, professors, you know, I had the, the guy from Glasgow University contact me, he's working for the government, asking me what I thought about it. And I, I said to him, the problem with these things is they're ideologically driven. They've, they, all these people go to COP26 or whatever it is, and they all stand there and they all want to outbid each other, virtue signaling, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do the other. And of course, most of it is smoke and mirrors, because when you actually look at the way they do it, it's not as effective as they say. Because they're all saying, right, we've got to do something, we've got to do something, otherwise we've got to pay the fines, which we've all signed up to. It's cheaper for us to put all these heat pumps in than it is to pay the fines because we can tick a box. But there's nobody measuring the effectiveness of those heat pumps once they're put in. In other words, they tick that box yeah. and then they're gone. That's them job done. Yeah. I mean, apart from anything else, the stress of all this with me and my wife has been terrible. Yeah, you know, you imagine half past 10 at night going out with a I mean, can of hot water to try and make sure you keep the heating on. I mean, that's crazy. Now, I would admit this is a, an extreme example. And I, I know there's loads of people saying heat pumps have been great. And I'm, I'm sure they are, but they're only great in certain circumstances. I think you once said on one video about uh, if you've got oil central heating and you're a farm somewhere, why well, wouldn't you have a heat pump? Well, fun enough, people have said to me on that when I said that, oh, you're joking, mate, I keep my oil boiler because blah, blah, blah. So we know what happens to oil prices, you know, and what's happening in the Middle East now may mean that we're going to have another huge rise in oil prices. So it's nice. I mean, but again, if a government allowed you to keep your oil boiler and put in a heat pump, what would be wrong with that? Because then you're... You've got to back up. You, you, I mean, they, they now make smart systems which will work out which one's most yes, effective yes, on the day, yes, switch yeah, it on, tell yeah. you what it saves up. That, to me, is perfect. Yeah, you know, that yeah, interface. Yeah. And 
And then if, if, if you, we ever do get hydrogen in the gas... I heard yesterday on the news that they're knocking that on the head now, that the, oh. the reports come through to say that's never going to happen. Expensive. So, again, they're renewing the gas mains. They're still renewing the gas mains all over the place, make them hydrogen ready and stop the leaks. So who knows where, where we go with that. Yeah. But I would predict, and again, it's, you know, I won't even be around to claim my prize or my money on this one so but i would predict that in 30 years time we'll still be using gas boilers because they work for certain people and, mm. and in that time we will transition there'll be a lot more people having heat pumps and that'd be good but like you said terraced house everybody got a heat pump on the outside or flats the other problem that you you touched on with the hot water is now 60 percent of homes have got a combination boiler in other words they don't have a hot water cylinder so if you're going to put a heat pump in there you've got to address this problem now my friends heat geeks guys are saying well you just put a point of use heater in you put a little one under the sink electric one and i'm thinking really is this is this a solution people haven't got room for a hot water cylinder in their house they've probably taken that hot water cylinder putting yeah. a shower in yeah. that place yeah. you're not going to get yeah, backwards yeah. are yeah. you yeah. so you i mean you're lucky i'd say in, in as much as you've still got all the infrastructure to yeah. make the change but for well, some people I, I mean these large radiators they're not particularly attractive oh, but no. i tell you what with a gas boiler on them they certainly put both the heat quickly yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, warm the house up but and um, you can turn the gas boiler down to, to 50 well so funny you can enough run I it. i've done that today i've only just reverted just to using the gas boiler and so i've got to balance the system out yeah can you so, isolate that heat pump just turn off a valve <clears throat> and isolate it so it's not running water through there yeah just turn it off interesting point about your buffer tank as well by the way because when i said that in my video my initial video heat geeks came i said you don't need a buffer tank you mustn't have a buffer tank it's hydraulic separation you do not need that and it seems to be one of those ones where even manufacturers are saying in some circumstances you need a buffer tank but they yeah. they're not they're crafty manufacturers because they don't actually commit they just sell you the heat pump yeah and they won't they say okay you have to get a design made now people have said to me well this is proof you're an idiot you've installed it wrong you know you should go and do some more training and get now when i've installed heat pumps i haven't made the thing up i've just gone with a drawing yeah so so when the um i won't, I won't name the company but they they have been helpful to me and they they came out and they tried every which way to make the heat pump work it's a it's an lg heat pump yeah yeah a, thermo v. Is, is a yeah. great big state-of-the-art thing five and a half years ago at least and they come out uh, at that time they found it very difficult even to maintain contact with lg i think it's got a whole lot better because obviously heat pumps are coming more attractive but i was at the bleeding edge of technology when it was difficult for everyone so they um yeah, they they had a a few issues even even then. So the get... communications with LG weren't great. No, basically. no, these are the tradesmen. Yeah, yeah. You know, I felt yeah, for them because they're sure. on the phone yeah, trying to get yeah, through. Yeah. Apparently, it's got a lot better, yeah. so that's good. But yeah. you know, they're a multinational company. You think they'd have uh, people on the end of the phone? Costs the... money, doesn't it? Putting well, people on the end of the phone costs them money. This is where they go. So the guys fiddle with the settings every which way to try and stop the icing up problem and then they said i think you're gonna have to have a buffer tank and that's how it uh, resolved the problem so basically the buffer tank is sending warm water back to the heat pump yeah to stop it freezing up in the meantime so it's not yeah. actually taking too much heat uh, too much heat out of a heat pump at any given time so when it was icing up how yeah. cold was it outside when it was icing up oh it started icing up at plus three degrees oh did it so we weren't even talking about no. having snow on it or anything. oh no 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 Ooh. that's the thing i was saying about the british weather it's wet yeah. and damp sure you're right yeah and uh at three degrees you would see the the fins on the side start to ice up now that didn't mean the whole thing was going to build up a load of ice the defrost uh, cycle would come in and it would defrost and then it would be back and forth back and forth but then gradually as it got colder this was before the buffer tank just occasionally then you'd have a really intense period of two weeks and it'd get more and more and more and then it was in danger of clipping the fans which is you know expensive isn't it i mean well it would be and yeah. whether they've done any damage so making them noisier than they were now or it's just five and a half years of them working mm. i don't know mm. but certainly um i, I walked up the street and I thought oh the heat pump's on <laughs> you can hear it my dear friend and neighbor he uh, I, I felt sorry for him so I said when it when he first complained about it I said well this is the future but what I should say to him is I don't know how to resolve the problem because what do you do you call someone up what are they going to do 
turn it off. You know, to see what I mean. So yeah. it, it's a tricky one. And yeah. I think um, that whole idea of having, you know, a dozen heat pumps in a small street of terraced houses is is... It's not going to work because you get all kinds of resonance as well there you, it's not only just the noise it's several of them working well exactly in a kind and of they're on and off on yeah, and off on yeah. and off so i don't think that works i think the perhaps you're right perhaps it's the the hybrid system would work better because that would cut gas consumption quite significantly but you still have got the other sort of social problems if uh, yeah i, I if wouldn't say even, even with a hybrid system that you're gonna you know that they're gonna be ideal for everybody I'm, I, I just think they're not but i think no. that i think that if the government got off its I mean, dogmatic podium you know this is you know as i say virtual signaling and just said do what's best for your house with due regard for the environment we do what we can it's a reasonable approach but this well, everyone's going to have heat pumps. I mean, I hear it trotted out all the yeah, time. You know? I think if I had my way, I, I, I'm a bit sort of old world, really. I think um, I'd like to go back to more, a bit more regulation mm. where when the guys come out to assess your house for a heat pump or, or whatever the system is, that that job is done properly yeah, because that's point. so crucial. And in my yeah. case, yeah. you had a situation where that of the house was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. This house was rubbish. Yeah. Put the two together and, oh, yeah, you could probably have a heat pump. Yeah. Well, that's the wrong answer. Well, because they wanted to sell you one as well. But there, you know. there was a guy who independently came out oh, okay. and did it. Right. You know, yeah. but he gave he, you the energy performance certificate as it is now. You know, exactly. And and of course, that's for the whole house rather than bits of the house. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think that needs to be um, looked at more carefully if if public money is going to be spent sure. on it. Yeah. But I think I'd rather have more public money spent on that side of things, so that people like me and and a lot of other people don't make a mistake of putting in the wrong system mm. whatever the system is yeah. almost every scheme that they've they've had has ended in failure yeah. because yeah. like the green deal and all the rest of it because all the wrong people enter the business they all come in and think oh there's government grants to be had here we're seven thousand five hundred pounds now you know and they they kind of load the price up so those wrong people are coming in they were double glazing salesmen or whatever they were doing and now they're selling heat pumps and and so on they all come in and then when the grants run out and as i've said you know thirty thousand heat pumps a year that's all and then the grants finished where are those companies going to go you know so yeah, you've got this yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. this boom bust yeah, yeah. cycle well, all we've the seen time. it with solar and me yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't yeah. help the market mature no. it doesn't help anybody in the long run so i think, I think let it well let it grow organically on its own merits yeah people like yourself who just said right okay I'll give this a go. This is going to be right for my house, rather than just look at that grant and say I need to get that free yeah. money. I tell you what really is needed. I think thinking about it is a professional who designs the systems but doesn't install them. So you can go to someone and say, "Well, here's my situation. Yeah. Come and have a look," and he comes and gives you his recommendation. Then you go out and you buy the system. They do it to that spec. That would be the best way of doing it, in my opinion. But they won't guarantee it. This is a problem with them, is that even the salesmen aren't allowed to tell you what kind of savings you can make on them. Oh, no, I know. So they're going, you should get this, you should get that. All yeah. things being equal. This would probably Another work. thing I had, which was just really, really made me laugh, was I said about relocating a heat pump because they didn't want it on the patio. They oh, they wanted the, the back of the they garden. They wanted it down yeah. the end of the garden. I said, OK, you shouldn't have done that. You should have stuck to your guns. Well, I kind of, you know... They pay my wages. They went down the end of the garden and stick it down the end of the garden. Didn't work. Kind of knew it wouldn't work, but there you go. But people said it doesn't make any difference where you site the heat pump in terms of its efficiency. And, and I know that if you put it under a tree, it's not as good. And I saw a heat pump manufacturer the other day saying, if you can, one of the big ones, Dakin or somebody like that, yeah. saying, if you possibly can, mount it in a south-facing position because it's warmer going to get more you know yeah and and, and that's no mystery but everyone's got no it makes no difference you could put it on the north side you can put it here you can put it there you can put it well i, I so suspect the sighting of mine was a uh, was a factor as well yeah. it's on the north facing side well there you go and yeah. uh you know i was thinking it could have gone at the back of the house or the other side on the south side yeah it it was done there because it was straight next to the old boiler and all the plumbing very convenient stick the pipes through the wall hook it up to the That's existing right. system and then and you're home by but there's just been so many issues and it, it is very very technical there's no doubt about it you're going to sell this heat pump on ebay or what anybody want a heat pump out there is let roger know and i'll uh, <laughs> we'll do the deal yeah, it's, right. it's an lg heat pump yeah. it's a biggie thermo v is a biggie split split unit 
and uh, if you want it and you can do the deal with John um, there you go you can you can prove it works it may, you may have the kind of home where it does work so absolutely could be a winner just, for just you. bring a truck <laughs> yeah yeah just bring a very large and, uh, vehicle and a couple of uh, heavy heavy guys carry. Carry. Yeah. I think the smaller ones I can see those getting stolen in the future but that's another issue I did yeah. think one day I might come home and it wouldn't be there yeah no yeah. I think when I start putting them on the outside of buildings mm -hmm. you know and along the front which I have seen I've seen them out the front of houses they're going to be unsightly know, thinking, they? oh that looks like if you look uh, at images of new york some of those big flats with the air conditioning units mm, was the same yeah, thing yeah yeah not Incredible. very attractive and, and the water tanks on the roof as yeah, well in new york because yeah, they do that yeah so an, an, another reason why we decided now to get rid of it because we were faced with another two thousand pound bill half that's directly related to the heat pump, or most of it's directly related to the heat pump uh some to the old system but there comes a point where you say well even though the um the cost of generating the electricity and you know using gas versus the heat pump is just about on par with the government grant a the grant ends in a year and a half so that makes it uneconomic and the service costs your renewable heat incentive grant yeah which was for seven years before the boiler yeah. upgrade scheme is going to stop yeah, in and 18 months' that, time. you're on your own. Yeah, exactly. So with that in mind, in 18 months' time, knowing that at the moment it just about breaks even in terms of comparing the gas and heat pump, but then the maintenance costs are proving expensive. So it just makes the whole thing financially unviable. You know? It strikes me you're quite lucky to find a local guy that will come and do these things anyway, because a lot of people we've spoken to have said they can't find anybody. You know, they're sitting there for three months waiting for somebody to come. Yeah, yeah. They, so, it, so. so the guys who um, came to my rescue originally, they, mm. as it turned out, they put the underfloor heating in the house originally. Oh, really? And I only discovered it oh, okay. or remembered it when yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I brought them in again. I was looking at the paperwork. So they, they've been really helpful. But now, of course, their business, I, I guess, is more focused on the bigger stuff, you know, companies and, mm. and factories and and bigger units and things. And so they've outsourced the repair to another firm. Well, I have to say, I think they're very good, but you know, they, they are inundated by people like myself trying to get things fixed. And the time scales are, well, far too long trying to get things done. You know, it's just too much demand for servicing the heat pumps and keeping the gas topped up and all that malarkey. And so it, it's, a, it's a bigger expense, you know, so I remember years ago being on a British gas contract and that was, I thought, expensive in, in the context of gas, but it's nowhere near as bad as blooming I people. Yeah, I mean, the thing about the, uh, the gas boiler thing is that often they would just come and put that flue gas analyzer probe inside the flue, yeah, yeah, yeah. take yeah. a reading, go, it's fine, we haven't got to touch it, yeah. they're off. So the gas boiler service nowadays very often yeah just amounts to nothing really just a quick safety check and, yes, uh, yeah, yeah yeah not so with a heat pump that's right so i i now got to get the uh the gas guys in to uh do a check particularly as we're going to be using it more but it needs it anyway it hasn't been serviced for a couple of years so but it is actually it. still working so oh yeah so yeah, the bosch yeah. uh, unit mm. uh it was an energy saving one at the time never had any issues no, with it no. whatsoever but i haven't hardly run it for the last five five years apart from topping up the uh, water in the autumn and spring and more of more of use of it in the winter for yeah, the so that, that's just repressurizing the system which is just to do with the system rather than the boiler anyway yeah yeah there's some the, people the, do that on a almost monthly basis yeah the the what they call them, an expansion vessel yeah, that's the red, it, yeah. yeah i i just uh, do that myself as i yeah. say the the uh, little handle yeah, um, it broke had off. broken yeah. and I didn't realise so no. I, I couldn't turn it on to no. get the water in it no, no. but uh, that's just another little thing that went wrong no.